How's it going, everybody? Let's continue in Acts chapter. Uh, nope, we are not in chapter eight. That's Daniel. My bad. Acts 2, 35 through 44. <clears throat> Until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this promise to you, your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord. By the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all listeners to save yourselves from this crooked generation. And of course, you cannot save yourselves. And so he's telling them to repent. And you know, you cannot repent on your own. And he's telling them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, which is a spiritual baptism. He's telling them to be baptized. Now, there were times <clears throat> early on that they did the water baptism because that's all everybody knew. So they went through the water baptism, but baptizing them like they do today. Today's means nothing. Back then, they were receiving the Holy Spirit through the water baptism. It was kind of like a transition time. And then, um, of course, just like back then, they were healing. They were speaking in tongues. Uh, they were doing water baptism to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, today, you just receive the Holy Spirit. There is no water involved. Um, but it was kind of like uh, the water baptism was sort of grandfathered in because that's all people knew. And um, just like you saw in Pentecost, how the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke, and they didn't dip themselves in water for that. Um, and the receiving of the Holy Ghost is your true baptism of the Holy Spirit. Like John the Baptist said, one will come after me that will baptize you of the Holy Spirit and fire. And the fire is your fiery trials that you go through. But the promises is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord shall call. You have to be called. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this um, untoward generation. And you cannot, from this crooked generation. And of course, again, you cannot save yourself. Um, what he's that's the parable of the Bible is that you will tell people to do things even though they cannot do them unless the Lord calls them to do them. Hopefully that makes sense. I want to keep that. There we go. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. So, were they all water baptized? It's hard to say if they went through that process or not. And then they gladly received his word. Then they gladly received his word. Then they, that gladly received his word, were baptized. The same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So it just says they were 
uh, receive his word and then receive the Holy Spirit. That's not necessarily um, water baptisms there. I think I had Jim Brown explain it that there was no water. I don't know. Just don't fall for the water baptism stuff today. That's all I can tell you. They continue to step fast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. See, they were also doing circumcisions and all that stuff still, which, of course, is no longer needed for the, any type of salvational process either. So the believers devote themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship and the sharing of meals, including the Lord's Supper and prayers. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine of fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They just, they, they ate together, they prayed together, they fellowshiped together. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Semicolon, end of verse. Let's move on to Daniel. Um, 838. I want to also look at this in the New Living. As I looked up, I saw a ram with two long horns standing beside the river, and one of the horns was no, long, no longer than the other, even though it had grown later than the other one. The ram butted everything out of his way to the west, to the north, to the south, and no one could stand against him or help his victims. He did as he pleased, and he became very great. While I was watching, suddenly a male goat appeared from the west, crossing the land so swiftly that he didn't even touch the ground. This goat, which had one very large horn between his eyes, headed toward the two-horned ram that I had seen standing beside the river, rushing at him in a rage. The goat charged furiously at the ram and struck him, breaking off both his horns. Now the ram was helpless, and the goat knocked him down and trampled him. No one could rescue the ram from the goat's power. The goat became very powerful, but the height of his power and his large horn was broken off. In the large horn's place grew four prominent horns pointing in the four directions of the earth. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.